Welcome to Insight. Today we are chatting with Bob Irvin, president of American Rivers. American Rivers has protected and restored more than 150,000 miles of rivers through advocacy and on the ground projects since its founding in 1973. Bob has generously agreed to share some of his experience with us. I'd like to thank you, Bob, for joining us today. Thank you for inviting me. So American rivers are so interesting in that they penetrate the heart of the country and they connect to the coast. They were used as super highways in the founding of our country. They are certainly very important to our freshwater ecosystems and to the wildlife throughout our forests, throughout our countries, throughout our deserts. Talk about the work of American Rivers, its founding, and its work today. American Rivers was founded in 1973 at a time when we had really abused our rivers. You had the Cuyahoga River had caught on fire outside of Cleveland. Almost all of our rivers had been dammed and diverted and polluted in some way. And a group of far-sighted conservationists said, we need an organization that's going to fight to protect and restore our rivers. And they gathered in Denver, Colorado in 1973, a little over 40 years ago, and founded American Rivers. So let's talk about the condition of rivers at, at that time. By the 70s, it was uh, toward the, um, the end of the Industrial Revolution and we were entering into the Information re uh, Revolution. Our rivers had been dammed, um, reconstructed, polluted. When you look at the condition of, of the rivers at that time, had we not taken the type of action that subsequently was taken, um, would it have been possible for the country to thrive and in certain areas, particularly of the country, to thrive in the way that it has um, subsequently? Absolutely not. The rivers are so important to our communities. They are essential for wildlife. And when you think about the development of our country, rivers were the original highways. So when roads were terrible, people got around via rivers. And rivers, of course, were, were sources of power for our early mills and through the Industrial Revolution. They were our sewers. And so it's natural that as the country developed, we didn't pay a lot of attention to the idea of protecting our we rivers. We took them for granted. We they were did. just a, we re a resource to be harvested. But over time, we learned that, that rivers are essential to literally to our physical health our, and well-being as people. They're essential as uh, nurseries and, and places for wildlife to, to breed and to, to thrive. And they are great sources for economic well-being as well. Uh, people who love to fish, who love to paddle, who just like to be around a river. Those are in economic engines for our communities. And so gradually, as, as our environmental awareness grew, we began to recognize that we couldn't keep treating our rivers as poorly as we had, that we needed to start to protect them and to restore them. And American Rivers came along in 1973 to really push that message, and that's what we've done over the past 40 years. So the people who came together to, to form American Rivers, were there um, representatives of these different interests, the economic interests, the environmental interests, the regional interests, uh, government, business, uh, nonprofits? Was, was that how it was formed, or was more geared toward an environmental sensibility? It was, the, the folks who originally came together were conservationists, were, uh, there were a lot of uh, paddlers, uh, particularly canoeists, and some fishermen also. So recreational users right. of, of, uh, of the rivers. And when you, th when you look at the history of conservation in this country, that's often the, the folks who have come together to really uh, form conservation organizations and to push forward conservation, those who directly use those resources, uh, whether it, it is for fishing or, or paddling or just enjoying being on a river. Did you have opposition from the beginning to uh, some of your programs or were these programs, once they were uh, developed by people with a conservation sensibility, were they um, were they readily accepted or was there an evangelizing component required in order to gain support that you needed? In the, the early days, it was, there were a lot of knockdown, drag out fights. I mean, at that time, uh, agencies like the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers had plans to dam virtually every stretch of river in this country. 
And it was to, to fight those efforts that American Rivers was formed and to protect rivers under the new Federal Wild and Scenic Rivers Act. And those required a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, advocacy, a lot of education of policymakers. Uh, it was not at all an easy fight, but there were some amazing uh, victories early on. And in the course of the 40 years that we've been doing this, we've protected uh, more than 12,000 miles of wild and scenic rivers. And we've helped to, to remove more than 200 dams. Because we moved from an era where we were fighting dam proposals to an era where we've actually are working with communities to remove obsolete and unsafe dams around the country. So is it more about uh, instead of having um, uh, to use an old uh, an old saying that every problem require uh, is a nail and you need a hammer to right. to solve that problem? Is it now becoming more a question of how do you manage our resources in a way that um, strengthens? Um, our environment, our, uh, our uh, fulfills the interests of our diverse citizenry, um, helps communities. Is it a different tool set? Are, are, are we are we looking at it at, at these same problems collectively in a different way? We absolutely have to have a complete toolbox to address the problems that we have for rivers and for the environment broadly. We still need a hammer from time to time, but we also need to be able to work with communities to have a more sophisticated approach. And for example, uh, one of the areas that American Rivers has real strength in is working with communities to improve water efficiency uh, in, in the community. Things as simple as having better plumbing uh, facilities, but also how uh, water is used in a community because if we improve the efficiency of use, it reduces the need to build new dams and create large reservoirs that destroy rivers. And not only are communities finding that that's a better approach uh, environmentally, it's a better approach economically as well because it's a lot cheaper to improve water efficiency than it is to build an expensive new dam and pay the debt service on it for, for decades to come. Communities are, are reconnecting to their rivers and realizing the value of those rivers. Our slogan at American Rivers is rivers connect us. They connect us to, to the past, to the future, to one another, to nature. And communities are recognizing this all over this country. They're recognizing that protecting their rivers and reconnecting their citizens to those rivers is a way to provide recreational experiences for folks, to uh, provide new economic engines for communities, particularly communities that, that may have been hard hit by the loss of, of industries in the past, are now seeing that those rivers that once powered those mills are actually powering a new recreation economy that benefits the community as well. How do your programs, um, uh, how, how are they shaped to meet the various regional needs and the sensibilities and the, and the requirements uh, of these different and, and, and very heterogeneous ecosystems? Well, one of the real strengths of American Rivers is that we have both a local presence and a national expertise. And in order to protect and restore rivers, you have to have both. So your local people are, are providing expertise and, and a, really, a real understanding of not only their communities, but also the role of these, uh, of these waterways within their communities. Our staff in the field are intimately familiar with the rivers and the threats to them. They also work in partnership with other conservation groups, with government agencies, and with local communities to address the threats to those rivers. And those threats vary across the country. One of our main areas that we're working in now is the Colorado River Basin, right. where uh, water supply uh, is outstripped by the demand for water and a situation that's only gonna get worse as climate change uh, becomes more acute. Uh, it's estimated that by the year 2050, there will be 10, anywhere from 10 to 30 percent less water in the Colorado, and already the demand for that water uh, is greater than the supply. To some folks, that would sound like a pretty hopeless situation, 
but there are lots of opportunities to increase water efficiency, to work with the agricultural community on water reuse, to change the way uh, federal um, dams and, and water facilities are operated in that region. And we're working uh, with the communities, with the various other stakeholders, and with the government agencies to bring that about. And I'm very optimistic that we are going to see uh, a, a much healthier Colorado River in the future. We try to do that all over the country, bringing that local knowledge, but also our, our great technical expertise in a variety of areas to bear, to make a real difference in the most important river basins in the country. And you have to partner with people with very diverse and, and very dissimilar um, fields of expertise. Well, one of the things we do is that, that we make sure that we uh, hire and keep the best staff that we can and we have a tremendous staff of experts in a whole variety of areas whether it's in water supply and water efficiency issues or pr how to protect wild and scenic rivers or how to remove dams uh, which is a complex construction uh, or deconstruction task uh, or, or how, how do we uh, work uh, with a community to establish a blue trail which is a, a protected waterway uh, for recreational use in an area. And we have staff uh, both in our Washington, D.C. headquarters and around the country who really are the nation's leading experts in these areas. And they're, they're passionate, committed conservationists. And they're very good at, at not only conveying their passion and their expertise, but at working with partner organizations, whether it's other conservation groups or in communities or with government agencies. As you're shaping solutions, how do you understand what a solution needs to deliver? The only way that you can solve these complex problems is if you understand what everyone is looking for as part of their solution. And when you start having those conversations, that's how you identify where there is common ground and common paths to solve problems. Uh, I am a big believer in the power of, of talking with uh, people, even people that you disagree with, especially, especially with people, people. people you disagree with, because you find out what it is that motivates them, and often you find out that your differences aren't as great as, as you thought at the outset. And American Rivers is, uh, we pride ourselves on being pragmatic problem solvers, and key to that is our willingness to sit down and talk with the various interests. Uh, to solve these complex problems. So is part of this being willing to not only insist on 100%? Absolutely. Uh, you've, you often don't get 100%, uh, or it may take a long time to get the solution that you want. You have to be willing to, to compromise and to, to meet other people halfway. That said, there are some things where you can't compromise. Uh, if we have a wild, free-flowing river that is healthy, our commitment is to protect that and to fight any effort uh, to destroy a river like that. Uh, and that was why we were founded as an organization, and it remains uh, key to our existence today. How does your funding uh, function? Well, I mean, we are a nonprofit organization, and like uh, most nonprofit organizations, uh, there's never enough funding to uh, address all of the things that we want to do. So we have to, to be good at, at taking the funding that we have and applying it most effectively. And that's why uh, we recently completed a new strategic plan under which uh, we are focusing our work on key river and basins around the country, recognizing that we can't work everywhere, so where can we best apply our our strengths as an organization, our expertise uh, at, in our staff, and our, our limited funding to really make a difference in protecting and restoring some, some key river basins, starting with the Colorado River. And most of your funding comes from contributed revenue and, and from, from individuals and foundations and so Individual on. donations, foundation donations. We also receive uh, government grants for uh, a, a dam removal river restoration program that where we had work with communities to take out dams around the country. What's the future for American rivers? 
I'm really excited about the future of American rivers. We, I think we are on the verge of making some major uh, differences in some very important river basins around the country because this is an organization that has ha had such great expertise in a variety of areas. What we're going to do now is to bring all of that expertise to bear in particular river basins so that we're addressing not only uh, the need to create some wild and scenic rivers, but we're also addressing how do you restore a river by perhaps taking out some dams or changing the way a river is operated where dams remain so that it more uh, closely replicates what a natural river acts like. Uh, and we are, uh, under our new strategic plan, I think are poised to just really take off as an organization. So if you were to name three projects that, that you think are going to be key uh, in your next uh, five years of activities, what would those projects be? Well, certainly our focus on major river basins is going to be uh, absolutely uh, the top priority for the organization. Uh, and and we have started with the Colorado River, but we'll be working all over the country in places like the San Joaquin and the Sacramento River, uh, in the, the uh, Apalachicola Chattahoochee Flint, or as we mm. call it, the ACF Basin in, in, in uh, Georgia that flows into Florida. Uh, the rivers of the Blue Ridge and coastal Carolina, the rivers of Chesapeake Bay, the Connecticut River Valley, places like that that we're going to be putting together teams that are, are going to focus on, on addressing the major threats in those areas and making a difference in terms of protecting and restoring those rivers and basins. Uh, we also are going to continue to be uh, the leading advocate on national river conservation policy issues that arise in, in Washington, D.C. We are the leading voice for rivers. Uh, in the conservation community. And a lot of times when these issues come up, if American Rivers wasn't there, uh, th really bad things would happen uh, pretty easily. And so we're the, we often are the line of defense against those things happening. And then as an organization, uh, we are going to, I think, be, be growing as a, as a stable and sustainable organization for years to come in order to support this work that we're doing. Well, Bob Irvin, thank you so much for sharing your work with American Rivers with us. Thank you so much for the contribution that you're making to our lives and to our river ecosystems. And thank you for your insights. Thank you for having me this morning.